The Voyager 1, part of the Voyager program, it was launched by NASA September 5, 1977, with the mission goal of studying the outer solar system and interstellar space beyond the Sun's heliosphere. As of April 2024, it is located at a distance from Earth of 24 billion kilometers, traveling at 61,000 kilometers an hour. At this speed, it will reach the next star system in about 40,000 years. But five decades after its launch, human space travel capabilities is still in its infancy, let alone interstellar. Voyager's distance from Earth is evidence as to how vast our solar system is. Moreover, it is also a great initial test for human space exploration. Being the furthest human-made object from Earth, trying to reach Voyager 1 within someone's lifetime with today's technology is still impossible. To illustrate this, let's consider what would it take to only catch up to the probe in a reasonable time frame, from Earth to Voyager 1 as fast as possible. Reaching the probe in a reasonable time frame requires tremendous speed. The issue is, the total mass of the spaceship, meaning ship plus fuel, is the ultimate limiting factor. For calculation's sake, let's consider a spaceship with the same mass as the space shuttle orbiter, 200 tons plus engines. Next, we need an engine that not only can sustain constant acceleration for extended periods of time, but it is also fuel efficient. Nuclear propulsion is our best bet, as it is already very well developed. If fuel is available, it can burn for days, requiring only a fraction of fuel when compared to conventional rockets. However, fuel consumption, while comparatively lower, is still quite significant. As a reference, the Nerva nuclear engine back in the 1960s and 1970s achieved impressive 334 kilonewtons of thrust, with specific impulse of 900 seconds. Keep in mind that specific impulse is a measurement of an engine's efficiency that is directly related to the velocity to which a propellant is ejected from the rocket. In simple terms, the more energy you can transfer to a propellant, the faster it moves the more force it exerts with less fuel required to accelerate the ship. Lastly, we need to consider the traveling distance. 24 billion kilometers is very far away. If we were to travel at the speed of Voyager 1 itself, 61,000 kilometers an hour, it would take 46 years to get to where it is today. In other words, to catch up to it, we need to go faster. Every year, the probe travels 534 million kilometers. With that in mind, for every year that our ship must travel, the probe will be further away from its initial position. Traveling at twice the speed of Voyager 1, 122,000 kilometers an hour, it will take 45 years to reach the probe. As we increase the speed, we see that things become more reasonable at around 5 times Voyager 1 speed taking only 11 years to reach the probe. But the best speed to aim for is around 610,000 km an hour, requiring only 5 years to reach the probe. There is only one man-made object that has reached that speed, and that is the NASA Parker Solar. It set the record speed of 635,000 km an hour. However, while surviving in space is completely doable for astronauts, let's face it, a five-year mission goes beyond what humans can endure in zero gravity. Logically, sending an autonomous vehicle would make more sense, but believe it or not, choosing between humans or robots is the least of our problems. Using the rocket equation, we can determine the fuel ratio necessary to achieve that speed. Let's consider the following. Ship's dry mass of 240 tons. Initial velocity, 7,500 meters per second. Desire change in velocity, 170,000 meters per second. Effective exhaust velocity, 4,500 meters per second. Putting everything together, and the fuel mass required is unbelievable. This number is so big, it's hard to understand. To help visualize it, we will use the Starship Stage 1 that can carry 3,500 tons of fuel. In other words, 
this number is equivalent to 1.5 quadrillion starship stage 1, or 37% of Pluto's mass. Even if we wanted to just send a robot to catch up with the probe within a time frame of 3 to 5 years, fuel consumption makes this endeavor simply impossible. This is the very reason why scientists are hard at work developing engines with higher efficiency, such as iron and nuclear. Everything comes down to effective exhaust velocity. Just by doubling it, which is what nuclear engines offer at minimum, fuel consumption drops by a factor of 140 million. Though quite the fuel savings, 10 million starships are still necessary. Even solid-core nuclear engines cannot reach the probe in a reasonable time frame, but they aren't the only option. There are two other options that makes traveling billions of kilometers a walk in the park. The next technologies in line are molten and gaseous core, with 26 and 67,000 meters per second exhaust velocity respectively. The difference is that solid core reactor is limited by the melting temperatures of metal alloys. Molten and gaseous nuclear core are effectively separate from the core, meaning that they can achieve much higher temperatures, therefore higher specific impulse. A molten core engine with a theoretical specific impulse of 27,000 cuts fuel requirement from 10 million starships to 37. Gaseous core 67,000 ISP, less than one starship. Technically, retrieving the satellite within six months or less would be possible with molten, and definitely a few days with gaseous core engine. Nevertheless, while doable in theory, the limiting factor is, of course, materials, as in metal alloys that can withstand the extreme heat. All in all, this simple exercise shows us how difficult interstellar travel is. Furthermore, the development of better, powerful, and efficient engines such as nuclear isn't a question, it's a necessity.